So, what is gametogenesis? Gametogenesis is conversion of a germ cell into functioning gametes. Okay, if we look into the male parent and the female parent, the conversion of spermatogonium, which is the parent germ cell, into functioning sperms is called spermatogenesis. And oogonium, uh, which is the female counterpart, into ovum is called oogenesis. This is a general definition in animals, okay? general definition in animals. But in humans, there are some differences, especially in oogenesis. There is no proper ovum formation in the human oogenesis, but instead you have only mature oocytes. In the spermatogenesis, you have formation of spermatozoa, but in oogenesis, there is only formation of oocytes. Okay. Now, uh, we can look into the four phases of gametogenesis. When does gametogenesis begin and what are the uh, uh, sub phases within gametogenesis? Gametogenesis actually begins when the parents were embryos. Okay. Gametogenesis actually begins with the formation of primordial germ cells. That is what is written as PGCs. So, the primordial germ cells begins not within the embryo but extra embryonically. So, let us look at this image. This is the image when the parent was an embryo. So, we are considering gametogenesis. So, suppose it is a male parent or female parent. When that parent was an embryo, this is that embryo. Okay. Suppose this is that embryo lying on the ventral side of that embryo. This is the head and this is the uh, tail end of that embryo. So, if that embryo is lying like this, the ventral side of that embryo is below. This structure is called the yolk sac. The yolk sac is like a balloon that is on the ventral side. On the dorsal side, you have the amniotic cavity. Okay, The amniotic cavity lies dorsally and the yolk sac like ventrally. So, in the dorsal wall of the yolk sac on the caudal aspect, this is tail end. So, on the caudal aspect, on the dorsal wall of the yolk sac, you see the formation of primordial germ cells. That is what is shown here as red dots. So, the primordial germ cells are formed there and those primordial germ cells will slowly migrate along the wall of the hindgut through the dorsal mesentery into the posterior embryonic wall. Okay, that is what you are seeing here. This is the yolk uh, duct through which the yolk sac communicates into the gut and through the dorsal mesentery. Okay, so the, if this is the gut through the dorsal mesentery, it will migrate backwards and it will reach the gonads. Okay, it is reaching the gonad. This is a section, this is a horizontal section image where you can see the migration along the dorsal mesentery into the gonad. The gonad and the primitive uh, nephric tubules, the uh, kidney tubules are formed, uh, these are part of what is called the intermediate mesoderm. So, this undifferentiated gonad is the destination of this migration of primordial germ cells. The primordial germ cell migration occurs at the fourth week of intrauterine life, begins at fourth week and reaches here almost at the mid-fifth week of the intrauterine life. This is an undifferentiated gonad. Okay. If this is a genetic male, these primordial germ cells will develop into spermatogonium. If this is a genetic female, these primordial germ cells will develop into oogonium. So, this is the first phase of uh, gametogenesis. We told that spermatogonium developing into spermatozoa is, gameto is spermatogenesis. But this is the event that is occurring prior to that event. So, uh, the next is an increase in number of germ cells by mitosis. This is also important. Don't think that meiosis is the only form of cell division that is occurring in gametogenesis. No, mitosis is also very important uh, for gametogenesis because mitosis is basically increasing the number of cells. Okay, you imagine uh, hundreds of primordial germ cells are migrating through the dorsal mesentery to reach the gonad. In that process, it, you undergo repeated cycles of mitosis and it creates thousands and actually millions of spermatogonia and oogonia. So, the primordial germ cells is in the order of hundreds, but it becomes in the order of thousands and millions actually and through a repeated cycles of mitosis. So, that is also very important, especially to create reserve cells of spermatogonia or oogonia. The reserve cells is also important because the primordial germ cells cannot just extinguish by undergoing a series of meiotic divisions. We need reserve cells. So, for that also mitosis is important. Now, 
Next is meiosis and in meiosis the most critical event occurring is the reduction in chromosomal number which I have covered that in the meiosis 1 you have a reduction in chromosomal number and that is important because the diploid cell uh, so structure that format is converted into haploid cell format in the meiosis 1 and in meiosis 2 the DNA content is halved. That creates the haploid gametes which is capable of fertilization to create a diploid cell. So you need a reduction in chromosomal number by meiosis. And the next is the structural and functional maturation of the gametes, the eggs or the spermatozoa. The best example for the structural and functional maturation is what is occurring in spermatogenesis because the product of the meiotic division is actually spermatid. The spermatid looks like a rounded cell but that structurally and functionally modifies into a very different cell called spermatozoan which has a tail which has a head so it is structurally and functionally different that, that is the best example for a structural and functional maturation so these are the four phases of gametogen you have a migration you have mitosis meiosis and structural and functional maturation okay so this is a, a picture which shows what is happening in uh, gametogenesis generally in animals this is this limb is showing male side this is showing female side let, let's look at the male side you already we already mentioned that spermatogonium and oogonium are again they are in turn developed from primordial germ cells okay when the parents were embryos so the primordial germ cell undergoes repeated division to form spermatogonium that undergoes mitosis growth and mitosis to form primary spermatocyte the primary spermatocyte undergoes meiosis 1 you can remember that this like primary spermatocyte undergoes meiosis 1 okay so the meiosis 1 product is secondary spermatocyte or secondary oocyte so the primary ones undergoes meiosis 1 to form secondary ones okay secondary spermatocyte in this case and the secondary spermatocyte undergoes meiosis 2 to form uh, spermatids okay so this is the product of meiosis and the spermatid does not undergo division but that undergoes a functional maturation and differentiation structural and functional maturation and differentiation to form spermatozoa this is the classic gametogenesis gametogenesis is somewhat classically maintained in spermatogenesis in oogenesis is slightly different in this picture you can see ootid and ovum but these are not there in humans in humans you only have secondary oocyte the uh, cell that is uh, released in ovulation is actually secondary oocyte. These are not formed actually in humans. So this is a baseline picture of gametogenesis. Then the next videos we will learn about spermatogenesis and oogenesis in detail. So thank you.